If you're planning a trip to Ireland, I'm willing to bet you're starting to get a little bit overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of all the things there is to see and do. From the wild and untamed, to the ancient and magical, to even Europe's most friendly city according to TripAdvisor, which is Dublin by the way. But not only that, if you are searching online for the top things to see and do in Ireland, you're probably getting the same 10, 15, 20 items over and over again, like the Giant's Causeway, or the Cliffs of Moher, the Book of Kells, or even the Guinness Storehouse. Now, those things are absolutely worth doing 100%, but if you're looking for some new ideas, or perhaps a more guided direction of maybe where to start, because Ireland, for being a somewhat small island, is still huge and has a ton to offer. So what we are planning to bring to you today are some unique ideas that are not on those top 10 and 20 lists, because you can always look at those other videos for those things. We're gonna bring you some new ideas, and we're also gonna break it down by area. So Ireland as a whole is broken down into specific areas uh, according to the tourism board. You have the ancient east and the southeast, you have Northern Ireland, of course, in the north, and then you have the cities of Dublin and Belfast broken out as their own unique areas, and then you have the wild Atlantic Way, which is the entire west coast of Ireland. But today we're going to start with the wild Atlantic Way. Now, before I get started, one quick side note. I apologize ahead of time to all my Gaelic speaking friends out there. I will not be saying these correctly. I know I won't be saying these correctly. I don't speak Gaelic, but I figured if I say it more phonetically, it will help people to find those things. So please don't murder me in the comments. I understand I'm saying it wrong. I apologize and I'm gonna just stick with phonetics so that way it's easier for people to find. Okay, that aside, let's go ahead and dive in with the Wild Atlantic Way and some of the more unique things to see and do. Now, the Wild Atlantic Way is actually 1,600 miles long. And the best way to see it, I hate to say it because they are talking about it on those top 10 lists, but really the best way to see it is via road trip because you are winding along the rugged coastline, seeing all the quaint little villages, some of the very ancient structures that there are to see from thousands and thousands of years ago. Some of them even predate the pyramids. And so it just really requires you being on the ground to be able to really take in all of the beauty and everything that Ireland has to offer in this wild Atlantic Way section of the country. So to that end, my number one thing that I want to recommend is the road trip and using one of my favorite resources, the Irish Road Trip website. Now, this is a blog that I found online. They are locals that give the local ideas and local flavor for all different kinds of things, but in particular, road trips. That's why they're called the Irish Road Trip. I'm going to go ahead and link them below. So if you're thinking about taking a road trip along the Wild Atlantic Way, be sure to check them out. They have itineraries, ideas, things that you need to know as far as parking and costs and all of the different things. So if you are planning a trip to the Wild Atlantic Way, be sure to check them out before you go. All right, the next thing I want to point out to see and do, we're going to start up in the county of Donegal with the Aaron Moore Islands. Again, don't speak Gaelic. But in County Donegal are the Aaron Moore Islands. Now these are the most underrated and often missed in the County of Donegal, but really are a hidden gem. It is a seven square mile island. There's only about 500 people living on this island. In fact, a few years ago, if you heard they were trying to get Americans to move to Ireland, trying to incentivize Americans and I'm probably Canadians and everybody else in the world to move there, it was this island. It is only about 15 to 20 minutes away via ferry from the mainland, but it is such an amazing, amazing place that most people just don't even bother going. For being only a seven square mile island, there's actually quite a lot to do. The main highlight is the Aaron Moore Steps. Now these are stone steps that rise up along the coastline, which can be quite dangerous, I guess, if it gets wet and slippery. So be sure to be careful when you're going up them, but they are a phenomenal way to see the rugged coastline. But in addition to that, Aramore Island has things such as scuba diving with some pristine dive sites that have a lot of wildlife that have been pretty much undisturbed by pollution and everything else that is disturbing so many other scuba dive sites. There's also other water sports. You can take a bike ride to the Aramore Lighthouse. You can walk around the city, enjoy the food, enjoy the atmosphere and enjoy the Irish culture that is still very strong on this island. But the other thing, if you like a little bit of the macabre, is to discover the story of the Cave of Slaughter. This is where in the 1600s a captain and apparently royal prick 
decided to murder women and children that were taking refuge into this cave. So by going there, you can see where it happened, but also explore that story in a little more depth. And so if you are up in the north part of the Wild Atlantic Way in the county Donegal, make sure you visit Aramore Island. The next is Glencar Lake or Loch. Again, don't speak Gaelic. <laughs> this is a fresh water lake that is surrounded by mountainous scenery. There's a waterfall to one end, which has been prominently featured in some Yeats poetry. It is surrounded by a gorgeous countryside, great for walking, strolling, hiking, exploring the lake, exploring the waterfalls. It is a gorgeous, beautiful place to go and should be on your list on your Wild Atlantic Way road trip. Next is a visit to Killybegs, the town, and also the Sliag, uh, Sliab, Slob, Sliab? What? Sliab, Liad, Cliss. Murdering that name, but that's how it's phonetically <laughs> spelled out. But Killybegs is actually a small town, a small port town, but happens to be Ireland's biggest fishing port. So there is a strong maritime history, museums, uh, there's festivals and things all around the fishing industry and culture. But also this is the gateway to that, that I can't name, Sliab Lag Cliffs which are actually three times bigger than the Cliffs of Moher. And so if you want to get away from the crowds of the Cliffs of Moher, this is a great place to go. So if you're there and you're visiting the Cliffs and you're not afraid of height, one of the coolest things to do is to take the One Man Pass. Now this is a hiking route along the edge of the cliffs that takes you to the very highest point where you can have amazing views over the entire area. A little bit adventurous approach to seeing the cliffs, but if you're not quite that adventurous, you can also see the cliffs via a boat ride. In Killybegs, there is a secret waterfall. Now this isn't talked about much because locals want to keep it protected. And it is a bit arduous to get to. You can't go when the tide is high, it has to be when it's low. You have to cross ankle deep streams, you have to scully over rocks. But once you get there, it is an absolutely magical experience and very well worth the visit. And again, I will link that below where they describe how to get there, what to do and how to find it and how to explore the area. While you're up in the north part of the Wild Atlantic Way on the far northern end of Ireland is the Inishwin, Inishowen Peninsula and the wild, untamed, very tip of Europe, Malin Head. Now this is the area that is known for its epic coastal scenery, which I mean, to be honest, all of Ireland has some pretty epic coastal scenery, but of all that Ireland has to offer, Malin Head is the best. This is also the place where they filmed the latest Star Wars, The Last Jedi. So it's the place of legend and myth. Now, County Donegal, and I've been talking a lot about places in County Donegal, but it is known as the Forgotten County. But because of that, it means that it has some of the most unspoiled beauty available and the most retained culture and beauty of Ireland. So it is one of the best counties to visit. And Mullen Head is still in this county. Because it has been forgotten, it has also have a proliferation of wildlife, beautiful scenery, it's just something magical and absolutely worth seeing and not on everybody's top 10 list so you should be able to escape some of the other more crowded areas in Ireland. Now in Malin Head not only can you explore the untamed beauty of it but you can also see where they film Star Wars but you can also see the northern lights here. You can go wreck diving and just see and explore some amazing scenery and wildlife of County Donegal. The next place to visit is Malagmore Head and this uh, this is a tiny village, but also happens to be a world-renowned surfing location. Now, if you're a surfer, you probably still will be getting into the water because these are where they get the giant waves. Those kind of surfers think Hawaii's North Shore. These are the type of waves that hit Malagmore. But it is known for a just epic world-renowned surfing spot if you ever want to see those giant waves. The other key things to see in this area or close by are Ben Bulban Mountain, and Classy Bon Castle. Now, Ben Bulban Mountain, it was actually formed during the Ice Age and is the area of much of Ireland's legend and myth, including the legendary Fianna warriors, which were thought to have lived on this mountain. This mountain has also been featured in many of Yeats' poems as well. And then Classy Bon Castle is privately owned now, but it's set only about 100 meters from the cliffs, and so it is a very fairy tale landscape and just an amazing place to visit. The other neat thing is if it's a sunny day, it looks like a fairy tale landscape, but if it's a rainy day, it looks like a scene right out of a horror movie. It is just 
Yes, you just have to see it, it's magnificent. The next is a visit the Caves of Quiche in County Sligo. Now this is another one of Ireland's hidden gems. The caves are a series of chambers and caves that were found to include human and animal remains that predate Egypt by at least 500 years. The hike to get to the caves can be a little dangerous at times, but if you're wanting to explore the most ancient history, uh, it is well worth the adventure. The next place to visit is Donegore Castle. Now this castle sits right along the edge of the water and is another gorgeous place to visit, especially if you're particularly interested in the castles of Ireland. This is also known as the place where a Spanish ship in the 1500s sank and when all of the sailors came aboard the high sheriff of the town decided to hang them all instead of helping them so it is an area of legend and myth and story and and beauty as anything in Ireland is absolutely gorgeous so it is well worth visiting very near to the village of Doolin and this is also very very close if you happen to be going to the Cliffs of Moher or Burren National Park these are all really near each other and so if you are visiting those other places be be sure to take a look at Dunagore Castle. The next is a visit Clue Bay. Now these are a series of 365 islands, all different shapes and sizes. This entire bay of 365 islands are surrounded by mountains on the north and south sides. So you can hike along those mountains to be able to take a view of the islands themselves. Clare Island is the largest and guards the bay. And it is also known that John Lennon actually purchased Dornish Island and intended to live there as a hideaway retreat. Clue Bay is just a little over an hour from Galway if you're making the trip along the Wild Atlantic Way. Next is a visit the Kerry International Dark Skies Territory. Now Kerry is gorgeous in and of itself, again as all of Ireland is, and it is gorgeous in the daytime, but at night in the Dark Skies Territory, it is said that a whole new world of color opens up because from there you can actually see with the naked eye more in the night sky than you can if you were at the Grand Canyon or out in the middle of the sand dunes of Africa. You can see galaxies and nebulas and just so many things. It is, if you're an astronomer or just interested in astronomy at all, this is an absolute must-see place. And if you're not familiar with the constellations you'll be seeing, you can always book a tour to be able to point out what you're looking at. But if you're going along the Wild Atlantic Way, you have to stop and see the beauty of that and then continue farther north where you can see the Northern Lights as well from Malin Head. So as I said at the beginning, the perfect way to see the Wild Atlantic Way is via road trip. And as you're going along that road trip, be sure that you don't miss driving along the Slee Head Drive. This begins and ends in Dingle on the Dingle Peninsula. This route is the home of little coastal villages and amazing winding roads along the seaside cliff and absolutely killer scenery. Now, there are some tricks to driving this because there are some times when it forks one way but you really need to stay a different way so be sure to click the link below which will explain how to go when to go and all there is to do and see there is a particular area in this that just looks really cool to be able to drive up and see but if you're driving along the Wild Atlantic Way this is an absolute must-see next take a look at these videos here which will help you plan that trip to Ireland and other than that I want to thank you for stopping by take care and I will see you on the next video bye bye